Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 65 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 66 in the RSV. Unto the end. A canticle of a psalm of the resurrection. Canticle and psalm both refer to songs of worship. The resurrection being referred to here is the general resurrection, the raising and glorifying of God's faithful, though the rest of the psalm doesn't mention it explicitly. Shout with joy to God, all the earth. Sing ye a psalm to his name. Give glory to his praise. Say unto God, How terrible are thy works, O Lord! In the multitude of thy strength thy enemies shall lie to thee. Terrible in the sense of amazing and awe-inspiring, not in the sense of horrible or dreadful. This psalm uses the word terrible multiple times, and always to mean amazing or very good. Also, the enemies of God don't lie to God because of his strength, but because they're trying to get away with something. So in this verse, the word lie probably means that his enemies will fall before him, either to plead for mercy or because God has defeated them by force. Let all the earth adore thee and sing to thee. Let it sing a psalm to thy name. Everyone in the world should sing songs of praise to God. Come and see the works of God, who is terrible in his counsels over the sons of men. Again, terrible meaning very good. God's advice to people is exceptionally good. Who turneth the sea into dry land, in the river they shall pass on foot. There shall we rejoice in him a reference to two similar miracles in the history of the people of Israel, the parting of the Red Sea by God when Moses led the people out of Egypt, and the parting of the Jordan River, which God performed through the Ark of the Covenant in the third chapter of Joshua. This verse also implies, correctly, that miracles like these bring joy. Who by his power ruleth forever, his eyes behold the nations. Let not them that provoke him be exalted in themselves. God is all-seeing and all-powerful, and those who oppose him shouldn't be glorified. O oh, bless our God, ye Gentiles, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Non-Israelites have good reasons to worship God, too. Who hath set my soul to live, and hath not suffered my feet to be moved. For thou, O oh God, hast proved us, thou hast tried us by fire as silver is tried. When we live in peace, or even live at all, it's only because of God who allows us to endure great difficulties so that we can improve. The comparison being made here is to the use of hot fires in a furnace to refine silver or extract it from lead. This process was called cupellation and is over 4,500 years old, having been practiced by the Chaldeans and other peoples since the early Bronze Age. The process is based on the fact that typical, non-rare metals oxidize, while metals like silver and gold don't, and this can be used to separate them at high temperatures, since silver has a higher melting point than lead or even lead oxide do. This was done by using shells, limestone, or bone ash, something with plenty of calcium or magnesium, to absorb the molten lead once the temperature was high enough, leaving the pure silver behind. This psalm is saying that God allows us to experience trials in the same way, to increase our value as people, in the same way that pure silver has greater value than a little silver mixed into a lump of lead does. Thou hast brought us into a net, thou hast laid afflictions on our backs, thou hast set men over our heads, we have passed through fire and water, and thou hast brought us out into a refreshment. Continuing the analogy from before, smiths would heat up precious metals, put the metal in molds to shape it, then cool it by dunking it into a bucket of water. Passing through fire, then water, therefore, is a reference to God using trials to make beautifully fashioned and useful things out of a precious material like a silversmith would. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth hath spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer up to thee holocausts full of marrow with burnt offerings of rams, I will offer to thee bullocks with goats. A promise to offer sacrifices to God. Three specific animals are mentioned. A bullock, or young bull, was offered mostly on holy days or other special occasions, though it could also be offered for other reasons. Secondly, 
goats, which were offered to pay the price for sins, according to Leviticus. Finally is the ram, which was usually an offering of thanksgiving, similar to Abraham's offering of a ram when he thanked God for sparing his son Isaac. Come and hear, all you that fear God, and I will tell you what great things he hath done for my soul. I am willing to explain the good that God did for me to anyone who respects him. I cried to him with my mouth, and I extolled him with my tongue. If I have looked at iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Therefore hath God heard me, and hath attended to the voice of my supplication. If I pursued evil and sin instead of holiness, God wouldn't listen to my prayers, but since I don't, he did. Blessed be God, who hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Praise for God, because of his willingness to hear the prayers of his faithful, and show them mercy. This is mostly a psalm of praise, thanking and respecting God for the good things he does, his faithfulness, and his willingness to do what's needed to help us improve. It seems to be putting some effort into explaining why bad things happen to good people as well, since all the imagery of refining and purifying of precious metal implies that events that we think of as hard or horrible may actually benefit us in the long run, and that that's the very reason why God allows us to experience them. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.